The old man was dealing with the escaped prisoner's body. Seeing someone escape without getting electrocuted, Michael deduced that the barbed wire fence wasn't electrified. Whistler mentioned that everyone knew there was no electricity, but the crucial point was that the guards would kill you. Whistler approached to ask for a book, stating that if his brother didn't return it to him, he wouldn't be able to explain to the company. If we keep getting entangled in this issue, they will definitely take action. Michael wasn't afraid, but his brother was already scared. Michael noticed that his brother seemed a bit off, but didn't dwell on it. He tossed a balled-up paper to Lincoln, instructing him to contact the old man who buried the bodies. It was time to take action. Seeing Lincoln hesitate to speak, Michael asked what he wanted to say. Lincoln expressed regret, realizing that so many people had been hurt because of him. As Lincoln departed, he knew that he might not be forgiven this time. With Sarah no longer around, he couldn't bring himself to tell the truth to his younger brother, who deeply loved Sarah. Lincoln was afraid that Michael, due to his emotional distress, wouldn't save Whistler. LJ wouldn't be saved. Lincoln knew he was being selfish, but he had no other choice. Susan, waiting outside, stated that it was Lincoln who forced her hand, and now he should understand the consequences of their trickery. She didn't want to harm his son anymore and threatened to send him pieces of him. Lincoln complied, saying he would do whatever she wanted. He told Susan about the plan involving Michael, and Susan told him to start taking action. Before leaving, Susan asked Lincoln to hand over the real bird guide. Lincoln, no longer resisting, gave her the real one. Inside the prison, Michael was also executing his plan. He made a bet with Gallego that he wouldn't be able to throw the ball into the bucket. Gallego was very confident in his skills, but he failed. He didn't have money, and Michael didn't want money either. Instead, he asked for Gallego's necklace and said he would return it after using it. Gallego suddenly remembered the time when Michael blew up the water pipe and now wanted to be involved. Lechero, who was watching TV, suddenly found himself in darkness as the prison lost power. Mahoney had a severe reaction to the power outage and started experiencing hallucinations. He saw a hand suddenly touch his shoulder in the mirror, startling him. Michael happened to witness Mahoney's reaction, and he expressed that he needed a pen right now. He asked Mahoney to find one immediately. Mahoney agreed, and Michael told him to keep it under control. Mahoney assured him that he would. Bellick saw the two of them talking and went directly to Mahoney to understand what was going on. Bellick suggested mutual assistance and asked to be taken out. Mahoney asked him if he had a pen, but Bellick said he didn't. Mahoney turned and walked away. After much effort, he found a black pen, but Michael said it wasn't what he wanted and asked him to continue searching. Mahoney saw a reflection in the water and heard a voice in his ear telling him that Michael was a fraud and not to trust him. After a power outage in the prison, Lechero grabbed one of his subordinates and asked him what happened. The subordinate said it might be due to excessive power load. Lechero ordered him to fix it quickly, but the subordinate said he was a truck driver and didn't know how to fix circuits. Lechero suddenly remembered someone who could help and asked Bag if Michael was an engineer. Bag advised against getting involved with Michael, but Lechero went to see Michael anyway and asked him if he knew how to fix circuits. Lechero was very anxious because the phone was used to contact the outside for food delivery and without power, they would all be in trouble. Michael told him it was his reign that would be in trouble. Lechero asked him if he could fix the circuit and Michael said it wasn't that easy. The water pipes were inside the prison, but the electrical wires were in the outside area. Going out could result in getting shot. Lechero said he could make a few phone calls to contact someone, but Michael had to go out. Michael pointed to a cell and said, Give me this room, and I'll fix the electricity for you. Lechero looked at one of his henchmen who sold goods and got angry because he had paid very little money. He questioned whether the henchman had pocketed the rest. The henchman protested his innocence. Lechero threw the henchman down, and Bag quickly helped him up. At that moment, the prison guard Lechero had contacted called, allowing Michael to go out and fix the circuit. The guard warned Lechero that if anything went wrong, not only would he be in danger, but Lechero would also be in trouble. Lechero understood. Bellick, with a smug expression, found Michael and said he knew about his and Mahoney's escape plan. 
However, he didn't know much, and Michael felt relieved because Bellick didn't know about Whistler. They dug together. Not long after, they dug up the electrical box, and Bellick saw Michael burying something inside and said he wanted to take a break. Whistler asked Michael about the new companion. Michael explained that he had figured out a few things, and Whistler asked if he was referring to the Fox River incident. Michael assured him that he wouldn't reveal anything but expressed his lack of trust in Bellick. Whistler became upset, saying that Michael was bringing a sick monkey along for the escape. Michael explained that he needed Mahoney because he had figured out most of the plan, and he needed to keep Mahoney under control. He believed that once Mahoney's mind became unclear, he could easily deceive him. Meanwhile, poor Mahoney was struggling to resist his body's reactions. The experienced henchman, with his expertise in selling goods, immediately targeted Mahoney and asked him if he wanted some contraband. However, Mahoney wanted a sedative, not contraband. Dag quickly killed the henchman with a plastic bag and then injected him with contraband to fake the cause of death. Bellick arrived at Lechero's house and immediately revealed that Michael was planning an escape. He could tell that Michael had no intention of taking him along, so he decided to make Michael's life difficult. At first, Lechero didn't pay much attention and said that he was the one who found Michael. He asked Bellick if he had any objections. Bellick swears that he saw him bury something in the electrical box. If I'm lying to you, may I die a horrible death? Lechero became suspicious and demanded that Michael retrieve whatever was in the electrical box. Michael squatted down and pulled out a bundle of taped wires, explaining that the power was unstable due to worn out wires and that this would fix it. Of course, Michael wouldn't do something so obvious. He staged the whole thing to deceive Bellick. Bellick lost both the opportunity to escape and Lechero's trust. Lechero actually wants to go with him to open the switch. It turns out that digging the soil was Michael's diversion. He was only doing it to exchange for the key cell with Lechero. The real cause of the prison blackout was Gallego's necklace. As long as it wasn't taken out, the power wouldn't be restored. With both of them in front of him, Michael had no choice but to reluctantly shut off the main switch. Without restoring the power, Lechero feels that he has been deceived and orders Sammy to beat this guy to death. Taking advantage of the situation, Michael leaned against the wall and took off the necklace, and the lights came back on. Michael lied and said that the transformer had a delay. He asked if he could move into the new cell now. Lechero seemed happy. Thanks to the false information provided by Bellick, Lechero poured a pot of scalding coffee on him. Whistler went to see his girlfriend, Sophia, who had already learned about his plan to escape from Lincoln. He could only tell her the truth. There were people outside who wanted to get him out, and it might be related to what he saw in Seattle. However, Sophia disagreed and insisted on finding a solution together. Seeing that he couldn't change her mind, Whistler reluctantly agreed. He mentioned that he was trying to gather information about Michael to see if he could find out anything. Sophia felt that Whistler didn't even trust the person who was helping him escape. Whistler said that nobody could be trusted and advised her to be careful if she decided to join them. Meanwhile, Sucre was working on his fake ID photo when a disheartened Lincoln returned. Sucre mentioned that he was about to leave after staying for a few days and said that getting a new ID should be no problem. Lincoln asked him to help with a favor. As there was someone they needed to meet, he asked him to help translate for a few hours. However, he was refused and told that the bus was about to leave. Just then, there was a knock on the door, and Lincoln opened it to find Sophia standing there. She felt that she and Lincoln were on the same side now and wanted to help. Lincoln warmly welcomed her because Sophia could also speak Spanish. The two of them quickly found the buried old man and asked if he wanted to make some money. Back at the hotel, Lincoln contacted Sucre and demanded $15,000. Then he prepared to go out and do something. Sophia wanted to accompany him, but Lincoln became impatient and suddenly exploded. Sarah's head was cut off by them, and they kidnapped my son. Now he wanted to go out on his own and asked if she had any objections. Sucre was shocked by this news and apologized. Lincoln glanced at him and left. Lincoln went to negotiate with the buried old man, but after receiving the $15,000, the old man suddenly raised the price. Lincoln wanted to strangle him, but Susan told him to stay calm and said she would handle it. 
She then killed the man directly. Lechero discovered the body of his subordinate and called Teabag over to ask him what had happened. Lechero didn't allow any contraband in his team, and he couldn't believe that Teabag knew about it and didn't report it. Teabag understood and claimed his innocence, successfully fooling his way out of the situation. Michael returned the necklace to Galago, who was truly impressed this time. Then he encountered Mahoney, who came to deliver the pen. This time the pen was correct, and Michael told him to keep in touch before leaving. Mahoney looked at Michael, who was packing up, and kept hearing the voices of the lunatic, telling him to kill him. Teabag, who had taken over the position of the subordinate, sneaked over and gave Mahoney a contraband item for free. At first, Mahoney didn't want to take it, but the voice of the lunatic appeared again. He knew that if he didn't take it, he would completely lose his mind. So he picked up the contraband and started using it. Then Mahoney appeared at the door holding the pen and mocked Michael, asking if it was a bit ridiculous that he could forget something so important. He threatened Michael with a knife, saying that when they escaped, he should take him along or he would kill him. Michael went out to meet Lincoln, but Lincoln told him that the old man was gone. However, they found the old man's superior and bribed him with some money. Michael returned and smiled as he watched Suger moving the body. At this time, Whistler received the bird guidebook, which had a note inside. It seemed that Whistler's relationship with the company was not as simple as he had claimed. Whistler went to find Michael again, and Michael was watching Sucre spraying chemicals. This chemical can corrode steel when heated, and Michael has found the escape breakthrough. 